Welcome to today's webinar. The topic today is design of code form sections in RFM6 and RSTAP 9. My name is Andreas Hörold. I'm responsible for marketing and PR in the company Dlubai Software. For instance, the Dlubai website, the German and English webinars, customer projects, newsletters, and so on. I will be the moderator today. And I will answer your questions together with Jonas, but yeah, my two colleagues can introduce themselves. I would also like to welcome you to today's webinar. My name is Sonja von Bloh and I will be the presenter today. Hi, and my name is Jonas Bean. I'm working as a product engineer at Lubal for now almost a year, and I will yeah, try to answer the questions along the webinar as best as I can. Okay, thank you. Then we can switch off our webcams that the attendees can see the full screen. Before I hand over the screen to Sonja, I would like to uh, say something about how you can ask questions, at least for the attendees who participate the first time. You can show the panel with that arrow here, and then you can enter your question here, and yeah, we will answer you. The other way is to watch the entire webinar and then email questions to info at .com. Okay, now I hand over the screen to Sonia. Sonia, it's your turn. The topic of this webinar is the design of code form cross sections in steel design with warping torsion. I will design the code formed set purlins of a steel hole that you can see here in the image to the right. Today I will first show you how to model special sections in our section and how you can import these sections into Airstab. And the next step I will show the settings to be made for the warping torsion analysis and go into the rotational restraint on the shear panel. Finally, I design the purlins and add-on steel design. The cold formed cross-section that I want to use is not included in the Airstab cross-section library. Therefore, I will create uh, this cross-section in our section. The cross-section geometry is available as a centerline model in DXF format uh, so that I can use the import function. I start here the import via file import DXF, then I choose the corresponding uh, DXF file and then I click on open. Um, in the import dialog, I select the option to uh, create the elements via uh, the center lines um, and I define here a thickness um, of two millimeter for them. The creation of cross sections based on DXF files was the topic of a previous R section webinar. You can find this webinar on our website or on YouTube. Furthermore, I have to define the material here. Um, I uh, just want to use um, this material that's already um, shown here, but if um, I want to use a different material, it would be possible to open the material library um, and select uh, the material from this library. Okay, click here on cancel. Then I start the import process and click here on okay. Um, with this import function, the uh, part is uh, created automatically and also the elements are created automatically that you can see here. The uh, elements are required for the calculation using the thin world analysis and for the calculation of the effective cross section. Um, I now want to go into the base data and um, here I choose the analysis method. Here um, two analysis methods are available, the finite element analysis and the thin world analysis. I choose here the thin world analysis. As already mentioned, elements must be defined for this. 
this uh, setting only affects the default setting in Airstab. If necessary, I can change the analysis method in Airstab. Furthermore, I activate here this add-on effective uh, steel section and I choose the standard Eurocode 3 part 1.3 for cold formed cross sections. Um, this uh, setting is necessary so uh, that the steel uh, design in Airstab is carried out according to the standard for cold form cross sections. Then I click here on OK. It's also possible uh, to dimension the cross section. I will do this. For this, I create a new dimension and then I choose here the corresponding points. And these dimensions can be displayed also in Airstab. In our section, I can also calculate the effective cross section and the stresses. This is useful, for example, for a preliminary design. This has been demonstrated in previous webinars, so I won't go into it today. However, it makes sense to start the calculation once to find any modeling errors. I will do this. Here I go to calculate, calculate all, and uh, no error was shown, so it's possible to import these, uh, this cross-section into Airstab. Then I save this file, click here on save, and I will save it in this directory and then I can switch to Airstab. I have already created the steel hall in Airstab. The purlins consist of the cross section just created in our section. For now I have assigned uh, this uh, cross section to them and I want to uh, modify uh, this cross section. For this I open the edit section dialog and then I open my cross section library and um, then I want to import my uh, created cross section in our section. And um, the folder in which the R section cross section is stored must be integrated into the Druber Center. It's uh, only possible via the Druber Center to import a cross section from our section. And I want to put this folder directly under the pro project. So I check, um, so I um, choose add existing project here from the context menu and then I choose my folder. It's here on the desktop. And then I click on OK. The folder is now linked to the Druba Center and I can select the R section cross section. Um, uh, it has recently become possible to import multiple cross sections in one step. For this, I have to select this uh, cross section and then I can click on OK and all the selected cross sections will then be imported into Airstab. Now, I only want to import this cross section, so I click on OK. Here the checkbox thin vault model is activated. This setting was taken from the chosen analysis method in our section. 
However, I can also deactivate this option here so that the calculation of the gross cross section properties is then carried out using the finite element analysis. If this option cannot be selected, then no elements are defined in the R section cross section. You can see here in the um, graphic of the cross section uh, that the um, dimensions are shown. Um, this, these are the dimensions I have um, created in our section. And I click here on OK. For cold form set cross sections, the center of shear lies outside the cross section and the main axes are rotated. Usually, the loads don't act on the shear center, which results in double bending and torsion. Usual lateral torsional buckling checks cannot be carried out. Eurocode 3 part 13 includes design methods for cold form set purlins, but the purlins must be within certain limits. These simplified design methods are not implemented in steel design. The lateral torsional buckling of any purling can be carried out according to the second order theory, considering warping torsion and the use of equivalent imperfections. I would like to show this approach today and for the calculation considering the warping torsion, I first activate uh, the add-on warping torsion in the base data. For this, I go to the base data on top add-ons, and then I activate this uh, checkbox here. Warping at the member ends is assumed to be unhindered by default. To transfer the warping between members that are connected, you can define a set of members. The frames uh, consist of several members. Uh, you can see it here. These members are divided. And um, this means uh, that um, there are uh, warping uh, releases between each member. The warping should be continuous for the frames. So I've already defined a set of members for them. Uh, I show you this in the wireframe model. Here I've uh, created the set, set of members uh, for each frame. And if I open um, the edit set member set dialog, uh, then you can uh, see here a checkbox uh, discontinuous uh, torsional warping. Um, this uh, option uh, controls whether the warping should be transferred or not. This is supposed to be transferred, so I don't check uh, this checkbox. Furthermore, um, the purlins are divided at the connection point here with the uh, purlin suspensions, and the warping should be continuous for the purlins. So I've a defined set of members for the Perlins too. You can see it here. When calculating with seven degrees of freedom, the connection of members is always assumed to be at the center of gravity. If the connection is to be made at a different point, you can use member eccentricities or you can also model the connection with rigid members. In the steel hall, I have already defined members eccentricities for the transoms, the purlin, purlins, and the purlin suspensions. To do this, um, it's necessary um, to activate the checkbox eccentricity in the member dialog. I have done this um, here for the, uh, per, uh, um, the suspension. Here I've activated um, this checkbox eccentricities and here in the tab eccentricity, it's uh, possible to assign a member eccentricity um, to this member. And I want to uh, also look into this uh, definition of the member eccentricity. Um, the, uh, you don't have to calculate the eccentricities manually. 
you can also define them relative to another cross-section. I have uh, used this option here. I have um, defined the um, eccentricity type relative to sections, and I have defined a transverse offset from the section of another member so that the eccentricity is uh, calculated uh, automatically um, via the program. <clears throat> the steel hall is covered with trapezoidal sheeting. I would like to use the trapezoidal sheeting as lateral and torsional support. I can take this stabilizing, stabilizing effect into account in Airstab using shear panels and rotational restraints. I first define the shear panel. I uh, can do this via the navigator data here under types for members. I see here a member shear panels. I create a new one. And um, there are different types of shear panels to choose from. We have here the trapezoidal sheeting or bracing or trapezoidal sheeting and bracing. I want to define a trapezoidal sheeting, so I choose uh, this type. Then I go to the tab uh, trapezoidal sheeting and uh, I choose the trapezoidal sheeting uh, from the library. I go here and uh, then I define this trapezoidal sheeting. It's a Hirsch T5175. I click on OK. Um, the trapezoidal sheeting is fastened in every rib, so I choose this option here. And uh, the shear panel length uh, corresponds to my roof length, and I can pick this uh, graphically. I choose here measure, measure, and then I choose my nodes. And now um, the shear panel length is defined with uh, 10.05 meter. Then I have to define the um, the beam spacing, I will do this also graphically. I measure this and it's the spacing between the purlins and then I click on OK. Next, I define the rotational restraint. I find this also in Navigator uh, data here. I create a new member rotational restraint. Um, they are, are also different rotational restraint uh, types, continuous or uh, discrete. Um, for the trapezoidal sheeting, the um, restraint type is continuous. Then I go to the tab continuous. The trapezoidal sheeting and the material can then be selected from the database. The purlin spacing and the continuous beam effects still need to be selected. The spring stiffness C100 must be determined depending on the load. Unfortunately, uh, the effect of uh, cross-section deformation on ro rotational restraint here um, can only calculate it for I cross sections, but not uh, calculated for R section cross sections. The calculated spring stiffness uh, would therefore be on the unsafe side, and I have determined a spring stiffness manually according to the formulas described in Eurocode part in Eurocode three part one three. Uh, and I would like to consider the spring uh, stiffness. So I go back uh, to the tab main and then I choose here the type manually. And then I 
define the uh, rotational spring stiffness. I've calculated it um, to 1.07 kilonewton meter per meter. I now have to assign the shear panel and the rotational restraint to member supports. I'm uh, creating a new member support. I will do this also via the navigator data. And here I create a new member support. And then I choose um, my shear panel in Y and my rotational restraint about X. The trapezoidal sheeting lies on the top of the purlin, so I define an eccentricity, and here I define the reference on the top here. Then I go to the top shear panel uh, in Y. Here I choose the shear panel type I've just created, and I will do this also for the rotational restraint. Here I choose the manually defined rotational restraint. Um, I now assign the member support to this corresponding members. To do this, I click here on pick members and I use um, visibility for it. Here um, I use a generated visibility. I choose it here, the uh, cross-section um, uh, of my purlin, then I activate the visibility, and then I choose here my members, then click on OK, and OK, and then the trapezoidal sheeting on the shear panel are assigned to these members. It's also possible uh, to um, display the rotational restraint and shear panel graphically. To do this, I uh, go to the navigator display and you can find the checkboxes here um, under types for members. And here I activate uh, member shear panels and member rotational restraint. I will see it if I uh, cancel the visibility mode. Um, here you can see now um, the shear panel and rotational restraint uh, graphically. Okay, I can uncheck this check boxes again. I don't need it now. Um, by default, rotational restraint and shear panel are not taken into account in the static stability and model analysis. I can also take these into account in these analysis by using a structure modification. And I want to create this structure modification. I find it in Navigator Data here under Special Objects. And here I define a new structure modification. The consideration of shear panels and rotational restraints is already activated here via this checkbox. And then I modify here the name of this uh, structure modification. I name it consider shear panel and rotational restraint. And then I click on OK. I then have to assign this structure modification to the relevant load cases or load combinations in which it should be taken into account. For this, I use the combination wizard. I find this combination wizard in Navigator Data. And here I open this uh, combination wizard and the only th thing I have to do is to check this uh, checkbox, uh, consider st structure modification and to choose uh, the corresponding structure modification. And then I click on OK. 
I've defined already uh, dead load, snow load, uh, wind in um, X direction and Y direction. I will show you this. For this, I activate here the view. Here I have um, the load case sales rate, uh, then snow. And also wind in X direction and, and Y direction, and also a pre stress on the bracings. Um, I want to go back um, to my loads uh, that I've applied on the purlins. Um, if a member load without eccentricity is defined, uh, the load always acts at the center of gravity in the calculation with seven degrees of freedom. Um, I will go into this uh, load and um, here I have the possibility to, find, to define an eccentricity. Um, if uh, the load uh, acts uh, on another position, it's possible via an eccentricity um, to, to uh, change uh, this. And um, I've activated here the eccentricity checkbox and in uh, the force eccentricity, um, it's uh, possible uh, to uh, define uh, the eccentricity for the loads. Uh, the eccentricity should um, uh, the the load should act on the uh, top of the cross section. So I've defined here the reference on the top. Click here. Okay. Um, I've already created global imperfections. I will uh, show you this uh, now. I've uh, created global imperfection in plus x direction and uh, also in plus y direction and I now have to define the initial bow imperfection for the purlins. The various options for defining imperfections have already been demonstrated in previous uh, webinars. Today I would like to show the definition of local member imperfections. The purlin is uh, here supported in a Y direction by the purlin uh, suspension so uh, that a two wave imperfection shape would be possible. If um, the suspension is not stiff enough, it would be also possible um, that um, you have a, a single wave uh, imperfection shape. For the imperfections, I could now create two imperfection cases. However, it's also possible to use a stability analysis to obtain information about the imperfection to be applied and thus reduce the number of imperfection cases. I would like to show this now. And uh, to do this, I uh, go to my navigator data and um, then I go to a uh, base data and here I activate the checkbox uh, structure stability. Then I click here on OK. I uh, first look at the stability uh, analysis settings. Uh, to do this, I open this here. And uh, I assume that local mode shapes for the purlins only appear at higher eigenvalues. Uh, therefore, I increase the number of eigenvalues to be calculated to uh, 25. In the uh, combination wizard, um, I activate the uh, stability analysis with uh, the calculation of 25 eigenvalues and I um, also uh, change my static analysis settings uh, to um, first order theory. Um, and then I name this wizard stability. Thank <laughs> you. 
I open now the uh, design situations and here the combination uh, wizard stability um, is uh, already chosen and um, now the load combinations are uh, generated with uh, considering um, of the uh, global imperfection, my structure modification and my structure stability add-on. I now run the calculation for my design situation one. A message informs me that the cross sections or topology of the members in the member set are not compatible and the warping may not be able to be transferred. The reason for this is, among other things, um, that the set of members of the frame is not straight. You can see it here. Um, the column is uh, here um, angled uh, to the other frame and um, this is uh, the reason for this uh, warning message. Um, I assume that the warping can be transferred through the connection, so I ignore this warning message and the warping is uh, then uh, transferred. Here on the overview, I can see uh, that the minimum critical load factor is calculated in load combination uh, three. I uh, will go to the stability analysis and I will open now the load combination three. I deactivate here the display of the loads. Um, as a part of the stability analysis evaluation by mode shape, the mode relevance factor can be used to quickly differentiate between local and global mode shapes. A modal relevance factor of 100% means that a single member has maximum relevance for the considered mode shape. Um, to uh, look into the uh, mode relevance factor, I open a different uh, table here, results by member and here effective length and critical loads by member. And you can see here this mode relevance factor for all members. Um, I can also use um, filter option to output only mode relevance factors that are greater than a certain value. I will do this now here. I open the result table manager and I activate this checkbox according to criteria. And here I can choose the mode relevance factor. And here I want to see only mode relevance factors that are greater than uh, 70%. And I click here on OK. And uh, then I want to uh, see here my member number um, 258 and this member has a mood relevance factor um, of 100% uh, and this means um, that is a, a, a local um, eigenvalue. And I can see um, for this also um, the mode shape and um, this is a single wave here um, for the spurlens. So I have only to define a single wave shape um, for the um, bow imperfection. I will do this uh, now. And uh, for this, I uh, create a new imperfection load case. 
to go this, I open the navigator data again, and then I create here a new imperfection case. I name it imperfection and plus y direction, and um, I choose here the imperfection type local imperfections. I now have to define the local imperfections and I define a new member set imperfections. And here I choose the imperfection type initial bow. And as definition type, I choose manually relative. And for the Z cross section, I use according table 6.3 of Eurocode 3 part 13, the buckling curve B, so uh, that I define an initial bow of 1 divided by 250. And I want to assign this initial bow to the imperfection direction Y. Now I have to um, choose the member sets and I activate here my visibility once again. I choose then the member sets and I click on OK. I can sh um, show this also graphically if I activate uh, the show imperfection button and I now have to define uh, the imperfection also in the opposite direction and I will do this um, by uh, copying the imperfection case imperfection and plus y. To do this I go to the navigator data again and I open here my imperfection case I choose it and then I click on button copy selected imperfection case. I rename this case and then I click on OK. And all I have to do is now uh, to change the imperfection direction to minus Y. I would now like to combine the imperfections with each other. Um, for the combination of imperfections, I create a group of imperfection cases and I will uh, do this here in the edit imperfection case window. Here I create a new imperfection case from imperfection type group of imperfection cases and I want to combine first my imperfection and global uh, x direction with my imperfection in um, plus y direction. For this I go to the top the group of imperfection cases and uh, then I create a new line and here I choose imperfection and plus y with the operator and imperfection in plus y and I name it imp plus x plus y. Um, the other imperfection, I create the other imperfections um, with the, um, by copying. So I select this group of imperfection and then I click here on copy selected imperfection cases. And here I change uh, the parameters to minus y. And I need this also for the um, global direction y. So I copy this. And all I have to do is to change here 
the name and the imperfection. So um, that the individual imperfections are not taken into account in the combinatorics, I deactivate um, for them the checkbox active. And then I click here on OK. Um, then I have uh, to uh, modify my combination wizard or to create a new combination wizard uh, for my design uh, situation. For this, I open the combination wizard dialog and I copy the stability wizard and I name it here design. And I want to do my design according to the second order theory. So I choose here a second order. I don't want to use the stability analysis anymore. And um, I want to consider my imperfection cases and uh, my structure modification. Then I click on OK. I now have to assign this combination wizard to my um, design situation. For this, I added my design situation. And here I choose now the combination wizard um, for the design. If I go here, um, then I can see uh, the results uh, for my load combination. Here, um, the imperfection are considered and also um, the structure um, modification. Um, the structure is uh, complete so that I can make the settings for the steel design. For this, I first activate the steel design add-on in the basis data, in the base data. Here on tab add-ons, I activate here the steel design and on the tab uh, standards, I uh, select the um, standard that I want to use. I uh, select here the Eurocode 3 um, and I select uh, the German National Annex. And Click then on OK. Um, I now want to look into the ultimate uh, configuration for the steel design. I find it here also in Navigator Data, Ultimate Configuration. And um, here I uh, deactivate the checkbox Perform Stability Analysis since all stability effects are already included in the calculation. Um, therefore, only cross-section checks have to be carried out, but with the partial safety factor uh, gamma M1 for stability designs. Uh, for this, I have to activate um, this checkbox. Um, here, um, in chapter design of code form sections, um, the steel design derives from the manufacturing type whether uh, the design must be carried out according to U code 3 part 11 or U code 3 part 13 for code form cross sections. Um, if I um, deactivate here this checkbox uh, perform designs of code form sections, then um, the design uh, would be carried out according uh, to your code 3 part 11. Then I click here on OK. Um, in the table, um, steel design and uh, of, of the add-on steel design uh, in tab objects to design, I choose uh, the members uh, that I want to design. I uh, want to design all purlins. Um, I deactivate here uh, this checkbox uh, member sets and uh, then I choose here the purlins. 
um, I activate the visibility first and then I just select all my purlins and uh, then I click on uh, OK. Um, the calculation takes time because the effective cross-section is calculated in an iterative process. I therefore show you the results uh, in a calculated uh, model. And here I go to the design ratios uh, on members. In uh, the table, uh, the numerical results of the uh, design are uh, shown to display the details. I double click on the con corresponding uh, table role, row. Um, separate effective uh, cross sections are calculated for axial force major access bending and minor access bending. According to the information from um, the standards uh, committee of uh, Germany, uh, the effective cross-section can also be calculated for the combination of internal forces in a design with uh, seven degrees of freedom using imperfections. We will imp implement this in future. Uh, the effect of distortional buckling is determined using the eigenvalue method. You can display the mode shape um, via this uh, button here, section information. And um, here uh, we have um, the uh, buckling shape for only axial force, for major axis bending and for minor axis bending. I will show you here. Uh, the buckling shape um, for um, only axial force and um, by default the mode shape for distortional buckling um, with the associated critical load factor that you can see here is uh, displayed first. Um, by clicking here on the point um, on, on the graphics, uh, further forms of instability uh, can be displayed. Here you, you see uh, instability form for uh, local buckling. Okay. Um, the stresses can also be uh, displayed graphically. Uh, to do this, I open here the result diagrams and sections. And it's uh, possible to display stresses on the uh, gross cross section, and it's also possible to display stresses on the effective section. If I want to see um, the FS effective section uh, due to minor axis bending, I uh, choose here this setting and I can now see here um, this element is uh, reduced due to uh, local buckling and uh, here uh, the lip is reduced um, due to distortional buckling. Um, the elastic design according chapter uh, 6.1.0 Point six is carried out. The utilization is uh, below a one for all purlins so that the cross section and stability checks are fulfilled. Um, that, that brings me to the end of the webinar. I hope it helps you in designing cold formed cross sections and steel design. I now give the floor back to Andreas. Okay, thank you, Sonja, for this nice presentation. We got some questions. Uh, one question was uh, if we can, or it is, if it is possible to exclude, for example, the restraint for the, we are certain load combinations. For example, when we have got uh, a very high wind suction. Yeah, that's uh, of course possible. We can use uh, different uh, structure modifications uh, for the different load combinations. But yeah, in our example, it was not necessary because yeah, we have uh, a higher uh, yeah, self-weight minimum. Uh, yeah, it's 
the same as the winch suction or example, but that would be possible. Okay, then before I would like to show you where you can find the recording and the models, uh, I share my screen. So just a moment. So I hold back. Yeah, before I show the website, just a small hint. If you want to, to get a free uh, product demonstration or something like that, or you would like to get a non-binding offer if you, you know, want to buy um, uh, the program or an add-on, just contact our sales team with that link here, or you can scan the QR code. You can download the PowerPoint slide from the website. I show the website, just a moment. Our website is global.com and under news and events, here in the middle, you find the webinars. We record all our webinars, also today's webinar. Those are the future webinars, construction stage analysis, seismic design for reinforced concrete, and so on. That's our new add-on, time history analysis, and the webinar takes place on 16 of November. So that's today's webinar. In the next days, you will get an email with a link directly that direct to that page, and then you will find the recording in the middle. You can already find the presentation slides and the DXF file that Sonia has been used and the models can you already uh, can you already download okay that's also all from my side thank you for your attention thanks to sonia for the presentation thanks to jonas for answering the questions yeah i hope we meet each other in the future webinar yeah uh, yeah, I wish you a nice rest of the day. Bye-bye.